In today's tutorial, I'm going to be going over how to create kind of a little Hello World button. Uh, but in this case, it doesn't actually do Hello World. So as you can see here, it's running here. So what happens is when you press this, it changes this text to Gadget is awesome. Now, this is a very basic example, but I'm hoping this will kind of introduce you to Godot. Um, so yeah, then we're gonna, I'm going to be showing you how you can set this up today. So let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial. Alright, so what we're going to go ahead and do, of course, is first of all create a new project. So we're going to come over here to where it says new project and we're going to click that. So now that we are here, you can see it's created a new panel which says create new project. So here we want to find a place where we're going to store our project. So I'm going to click browse. Now you can see here what I've done is I've gone ahead and created a folder on my desktop called go.tutorials and in that I have created a folder um what my game is going to be called. In this case, it's just Hello World Button and 2 because the first tutorial didn't work out quite as I hoped. So in your case, what I would say you should probably do, and this is what I usually do with my Go Dot tutorial, uh, Go Dot games, is go ahead and go into your documents and then create a folder called Go Dot, and then kind of every time you make a game, create a folder with the name of that game. And then kind of save the project in there. So once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and click open. And it's going to open. It's going to kind of save it to this location. So I'm going to click open. And it's going to kind of get the name from whatever the folder is called. So you can change it or you can leave it the same. I'm just going to get rid of this too because I don't like that. So now my project is going to be called Hello World Button. So I'm going to click, cr click create. So now that I've done that, you can see my project's showing up here. So what I can go ahead and do is select that project and click edit. So as you can see here, it's taken us into the editor. So what, what we're going to want to go ahead and do is go over to the 2D view here. So I'm going to change this from 3D to 2D because today we're only going to be working in 2D. Now, um, this is not going to be a tutorial going over all of the different options and how to set up uh, how to use the UI and do all the preferences um, that would be useful to you and stuff. This is just going to be kind of going over things you need to know to finish this, this tutorial. If you want to see one on interfaces and stuff, I think there might be one done by someone else on kind of getting started with Godot. So this is this is not going to be necessarily that. It's going to be get, it's going to be making like kind of your first thing in Godot but it's not going to be going over every UI element and how to use it. So what we're going to go ahead and do is make sure you're in 2D view here. So click 2D and it's going to take you to the 2D view. Now Godot works off of a kind of a node tree um, system. So you kind of create a tree of items. So it's a bit hard to explain, but I'll kind of walk you through it. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and you can see we've got this plus. So uh, add slash create a node. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Or you can go control A and that's going to bring up this panel. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a controller. So a controller is the kind of the base element for UI. Now you could just add a UI node as the base. But since this base node can't be changed without deleting everything, I would suggest just having a controller at the bottom. Um, and that's just going to be quite useful because you can't change this bottom node so you just want to have it some as some useless one if you have it as a button or something then you're gonna have problems because you want to get rid of that but you can't um, so just make sure and you should use a controller so I'm gonna go ahead and click that so you could consider this to be the base of your tree now you can build everything off of this so I'm gonna go ahead and click plus and I'm gonna add a new node now, the nice thing about Godot is it's really, really easy to create a UI. So if I go ahead and go to where this controller is and click this kind of arrow next to it, this is going to expand down and you can see we have all these different types. We even have a video player um, and we have pop-ups and labels and uh, text, edit, text editors and all that kind of stuff. But what we are looking for is for the buttons. So down here you can see button base. We're going to go ahead and click this. And this is going to open up. And you can see we have button here. You can also go ahead and search for the type you want. So you could say button. And you can see it's down here. 
you could see the whole thing would show up at the top bone. I'm just going to go ahead and double click this and this is going to add it into the scene. Alright, so now that we've got that, we can go ahead and click on the, this little, uh, I don't know what you call this, this little round thing next to it. And you're going to kind of click and drag and this is going to scale it and create it to kind of the size you want. So I'm going to leave it as that. I'm going to move it to the center. So how the way you move is just click in the center where none of these are and you can kind of move it around. Just click and drag. Nice and easy. So now that we've done that, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to give this button some text so that the person using this knows what it does. So the way we can do that is here in the properties or the inspector, you can go ahead and come down and you can see under button here, we've got text. So let's go ahead and click on here and you can type something in. So I'm going to type in press me. Oh. That was not supposed to be a capital. Alright, so now you can see if we go ahead and play the game, you can see it's not working. So this scene has never been saved. Save before running. So click yes. And we want to go ahead and give this a name. So by default, this is going to take the name of the controller. Um, so let's go ahead and call this uh, of the sorry, the base node. So I'm going to go ahead and call this. Um, oh, hello, oh, sorry, <laughs> world, but, on, All right, so, uh, you can call it whatever you like, but I'm going to call it hello world button, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now you can go ahead and save it in just the default directory. So this is the base directory of your your um, kind of your resources for your game. So you can go ahead and save it in here, or you can go ahead and create a folder. I'm going to create a folder. Let's call it Scene Scenes, and we're going to click OK. And now we can kind of save it in here. You could call this folder Menus or whatever. And you could create all kind of folders and save it wherever you like. But for now, I'm just going to save it in the folder like that. So I'm going to click Save. So now our game is saved. So if we go ahead and click Play, it doesn't work. And the reason for this is we have no main scene has ever been defined. Select one. So what it means by main scene is basically when the game starts, which scene does it? Um, which scene does it select? Now, don't worry about um, which one you select here, because later on you can change it. So we're just going to go ahead and select the scene. So we can go ahead and go hello world button, and we can open that. And this is going to be our main scene. You can also come up to scene and go to project settings. And here you can see main scene. You can go ahead and select whichever one you like from here. So later on, if you want to change it to your menu scene or something, you can go ahead and do that here. But for now, this should be fine. So let's go ahead and click play. And you can see the game is running now. So woohoo, you've got your game up and running. But let's get it actually working with some code. So when I press this button, I'm going to have, I want to have some text down here which changes. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and come to our controller and we're going to go ahead and right click and we're going to go ahead and add a script so let's go ahead and add that now once we do that it's going to come up with this panel um, um what we want to go ahead and do is we want to go ahead and say in here it's controller yes that's good you you never i don't think there's any time you really want to change this this is always going to be correct for what you want to do so unless you move the script over, but then you would have to change it in code. So leave this alone. Um, we only have one language right now. And you can go ahead and save it where if you like. So if you have a folder you want to save all your scripts, and you can do that by clicking here and save that where you like. Or you can have it built in by clicking this, and this is going to kind of make it part of this scene. So it's up to you. I'm going to just save it to the Hello World, uh, to the scenes uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and save that in the same place as this scene. So I'm going to go create. Now you can see it's taken us over to the script view. If you want to get back to 2D, you can click 2D here. But I am happy to be in script view. Anyway, actually we're going to go back to 2D view. 
and what we're going to go ahead and do is create a, another node so we're going to go ahead here select the controller because we want it to be a child of this controller so we're going to click plus and we're going to search for a label so here we go a label right here we're going to click on that and open that up and you can see here now we have our button and our label now you can't see anything showing up for this label so i'm going to go ahead and scale this up and move this down all right so you still can't see anything showing up and that for the reason for that is you need to add some text so what we're going to go ahead and do is add some text in here so come down to here make sure you have label selected and under label here in the inspector you'll find text so we can go ahead and type something like go dot go i don't know whatever you call it people have tried to explain how to how to say it but i don't know how to say it so anyway here we go so let's go ahead and it should be all good so if you didn't see that so i, I sped through this here um by default it's kind of set to left top um but what i've gone ahead and done is just kind of centered it and the middle of both of these so when i move this it centers the text and i just prefer it that way you don't have to have it that way but i do like it that way anyway what we're going to go ahead and do is scroll all the way down to the bottom now this you don't actually have to do this but scroll down to find custom colors and you can go ahead and give this uh text some custom color so why not so i'm going to go ahead and go font color and by default it's black so let's go ahead and change this to a nice blue uh, this isn't really a blue anymore but I prefer it so let's go with that and you can also go font shadow so if we click that it's going to enable shadow click it enable shadow and I'm going to change this a that stands for alpha to about 0.5 L in the middle whatever you want to call it and that's going to kind of create a semi-transparent shadow all right you can do custom stuff down there if you like but I should be fine so that's under custom colors if you want to go ahead and change those so I'm going to go ahead and move back up to the top that should be all fine all right so when we press this button we want to run some code in our script um, so Godot has a really nice and simple way of doing this so if I go ahead and click on my button um, what we want to go ahead and do as I said before is when we click it we want it to run some code so here you see we have our inspector and over here we have another one called node so if we go ahead and click on this tab you can see now we have all of these different things now these all do different stuff so if you re uh, if you do different types of things it's going to run these so basically here we see at the top we have pressed so when we press this button it's going to say to the whatever we've connected to so let's say we connect it to this controller it's going to say to this script the button has been pressed and then we can put some code for it to run when the button is pressed so hopefully that makes sense but basically when we press this button it's going to run some code in this script so let's click on this button and we're going to click on double click on here where it says pressed or if you wanted it so when it was released you could also do it here but for now we're going to do the top one and press to so double click on that and that's going to open up this panel here and what do we want to connect it to well the node that has a script on it is this one here controller so we want to go ahead and connect it to this controller so that's going to kind of connect it to that script so um we're going to go ahead and click connect right so now it's taken us to the script and you can see here it's created a function and what this function does is basically whenever we press this button it's going to run whatever codes in here so we want to go ahead and get rid of this pass that's not important and i'm going to delete that and i'm going to go enter all right so we need to run some code so what code are we going to run well we're going to do some real real basic code but hopefully this won't be too hard for you people that haven't done any code so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go get get um oh, get underscore node so there we go and you can see here we have a few different options which it's auto selected so as you can see this um full stop uh, I think that might be the kind of basically itself so that would be the controller 
then it's got the children so that's kind of the ones that are over here as you can see they are kind of part of the they are below they're kind of like nested inside of this controller so they're a part of it um so the children as it's usually called of this node so um what we want to go ahead and do is we want to go ahead and access all the different things that we can do with the label so we're going to go ahead and click label and i'm going to click enter so now if i go ahead and close this with a bracket now what we've done is we're accessing this label and now we can do something to it so if we wanted to know what we can do what we can go ahead and do is come up here to this thing here which says classes now if we click on that and we search for label label here under under controller um if we go ahead and double click on that what you see is our script goes away and then all of this shows up don't worry your script's still right here and it's fine so i'm going to click back on this label thing here and you can see all the different things we can do so we can get uh, alignment and we can get line count and all these different things about it so and we can also get what text is in there but for now we don't want to do that what we're going to go ahead and do is we want to set the text so we're going to look for something that looks like that so here we see set text and it takes in a string value so we're going to go back to our back to our script and we're going to go dot and this is going to allow us to access different the different things we can do so we're going to go dot set underscore text all right, so I'm going to click enter and that's going to order completed. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and add a quote mark, quotations, a single, or you can go double as long as you use the same on both sides. So I'm going to go with a single quotation. And Hello World's a little bit boring. You can do Hello World if you like. I know this, word, this I did kind of write everything about it being a Hello World button, but that's a bit boring. So I'm going to go go dot is awesome because it is so now if we go ahead and close that bracket now our code should be finished so um yeah that's your code finished so if we go ahead and play the game and we go ahead and press click the button that says press me look at that it changes the text to code is awesome now if we click this again this is actually technically running the code again but it's not um it's changing it to the same text so you don't see that showing up so yeah this is the basic tutorial so here you go this is kind of your first little game and go dot even though it's not really a game i guess you could kind of make a true or false game kind of like this but anyway there we go there is your first kind of thing in go dot hopefully you found this useful if you have any feedback on how i can improve my tutorials or any tutorials you'd like to see uh, go ahead and comment down below because I would love to hear but anyway if you have any questions about this tutorial as well you can go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to help you as much as possible um, but have a great week keep creating games and if you want to see more tutorials like this